There's nothing better than a mod that improves the connection between the driver and the car itself. Let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, don't actually eat that, Lila. Don't I What's up? My name is Chris Gaines, and today I'm going to be showing you how to install a Torque Solutions short shifter in a 350Z. Now, this process will be somewhat similar in other cars. The main benefit of a short shifter is that it reduces the total amount of travel that you have to move the shifter in order to get from one gear to the next. This is the final product. As you can see, the shifts are very short. You don't have to move the shifter much at all in order to go from one gear to the next. Another thing you'll notice is that the shifts feel more crisp. That's a common benefit of a lot of short shift kits as they typically will include solid bushings to replace worn out rubber bushings in your stock shifter. And the change in leverage that you have with a short shifter typically makes it so that there's less slop or less free play when you move the shifter around. So what are you gonna need to install this on your 350Z? You need a ratchet extension and a 10 and 12 millimeter socket white lithium grease in order to lube up the different components. You obviously need the short shifter kit itself. I got mine from Torx Solutions. And you'll most likely want to replace the plastic shifter container. You can find that at your local dealer or at like z1motorsports.com for pretty cheap. This is a relatively simple job to do. You will need to be able to get underneath the car though in order to access the bottom of the shifter. So let's go ahead and get the car up on jack stands and get this install started. First off, we're disassembling the interiors, so start by taking off your shift knob. We'll take a quick look at what we're actually installing here. Looks so much nicer than the uh, stock part of uh, that billet aluminum. And for comparison, Here's the length of the throws of the stock shifter. It's a little longer than my first two knuckles on my pointer finger, from first to second, from third to fourth, from fifth to sixth, and even from left to right. So let's gain access to the shifter. You're gonna pull on the bottom of the central console cover, pull up and over, and then disconnect any cables, like the AC controls, then you're going to start disassembling the shifter itself. You're going to need your 10mm and your extension to remove these four bolts on each corner. Make sure you don't lose any of your hardware and remember exactly where it goes. We're going to pull up this metal retainer. It has an arrow on it that should tell you which direction points forward, so don't forget that. Then remove this rubber boot. And now you have a better view of what you're working with. And what do you know, there's another rubber boot for you to pull off. This one's triangular. Oops. And now with that boot removed, you can actually see how the shifter mounts into the transmission. Next up, there are three more 10 millimeter bolts. Remove these, keep them safe. And then you can remove the shift lockout plate. This prevents you from shifting into reverse instead of six on accident. Now you get to watch me suffer for about five minutes while I try to remove a shifter that is still connected to the bottom of the car. 
Now that we realize where we need to go, let's head underneath there and pull this tab towards the rear of the car on this black boot, push that forward, and now you have access to the 8mm bolt that holds the shifter to the transmission linkage. You want to remove this. It takes a little bit of effort, but it's not too difficult. And pull it out, and then you can head back up top. And now we have our shifter completely removed from the transmission. As you can see, it's looking a little crusty and worse for wear. We're gonna fix this. Now, while you can reuse your original shifter ball socket cup, I highly recommend picking up a new one from somewhere like Z1 Motorsports. And as you can see, all new parts just look nice and fresh. So we're about to install the new shifter into the uh, new cup. What you wanna do is lube it up with some white lithium grease. I use the spray kind. You might wanna use a thicker version in hindsight. So what you need to do is find a way to support the ball cup. I use two wooden blocks, and then you want to use another wooden block on top of the new shifter and lightly tap it in with a mallet so you don't damage any of the threads. So what are the pros and cons of a short throw shifter? Well, pro is that because you have less distance to move the stick in between shifts, your shifts become naturally faster than they would be if you had a longer throw. Another advantage is the added precision that you have can make it harder for you to miss shift when you're driving aggressively because there's less play in the entire system. Now, what are the drawbacks? One disadvantage of reducing the mechanical leverage that you have when you're shifting the gears in order to get that shorter throw is that it takes more physical effort in order to shift gears. So that's something that you'll have to take into consideration, especially depending on your specific transmission. In my case, the 350Z's transmission was already pretty notchy from the get-go. And with the Torque Solution Shifter, which is about a 33% shorter throw, uh, shift effort barely increased for me, honestly. And all the benefits as far as the crispness of the, the feel, the precision, far outweighed any additional effort that is required in order to move the shifter. One way to counteract the additional effort required in shifting would be to get a weighted shift knob. It will help the gears engage smoother once you add a little bit of momentum moving from one gate to the next. And we're back for another episode of Watching Me Suffer So You Don't Have To. In this case, this circular spacer does not go in after the shifter. Put it in before the shifter and the spring. Now we generously apply more white lithium grease. There's no reason not to. And again, make sure that you put the spring in beforehand. I was just checking to make sure everything fit in that case. Next up, we install this triangular shifter plate. The point points towards the front of the car. Make sure that it's oriented correctly so that the larger holes match up with the stock shifter plate. Now, for these next three screws, you're gonna make sure to apply some blue Loctite as you do not want these vibrating loose. Make sure not to tighten these down all the way yet because we need to go underneath the car and install the two supplied metal bushings between the bottom of the shifter and the transmission linkage. Reinstall in the exact opposite way that you took everything apart. And take extra care to get that rubber boot back onto the lip that is on the bottom of the shifter mount. And oh man, do those shifts feel crispy. We're on the home stretch, so the last thing to do is to adjust your reverse lockout plate so that there are no rattles, but you can still get into reverse as needed. And we're going to reassemble everything in the reverse order, starting with our triangular boot. This might be a little harder to get into place with the new setup, but make do with what you got. Then we place the rectangular boot on top, making sure to snug the central part onto the shifter. Then we replace the metal rectangle with the arrow pointing forward. Tighten everything down, doesn't have to be too tight. Just snug. And it's looking good. Does everyone have the sound deadening or is it just me? I, I, don't, I actually don't know. 
Now that the shifts are shorter, I actually have to move the shifter back in order to make space to replace my center console. And press down and it's there. Then I can reinstall my shift knob. Make sure that it's horizontal. Looking good. I cannot wait to get this thing out on the road. For comparison, from stock, the shifts are literally about 33% shorter. All right, and there you have a short throw shifter installed in your car. Now is the fun part. Go take your car out for a spin, make sure everything is secure and everything works exactly as it's intended, and really feel the difference between your stock shifter and how much more precise and aggressive and engaging the short shifter feels when you're driving aggressively. This is a mod I highly recommend, especially if you have a rear wheel drive car with a solid mounted shifter as opposed to cable linkages, um, because you really feel like you have a direct connection to the entire drivetrain and it really just enhances your experience. I mean, at the end of the day, that's all that we really care about, right? Is enjoying the drive itself. Lucky for you guys, I've had this shifter in the car for over a year by the time that I'm filming this. So I would say that it performs flawlessly. Um, I love the feel, never got tired of it. Um, would do it again in a heartbeat. Again, the install was relatively, uh, it was pretty simple, just a little bit of uh, reaching in order to disconnect the shifter from underneath the car. And you do have to adapt your shifting style a little bit from stock when you're getting used to the new shifter. That is the one thing that you will want to make sure. Take your time, don't rush shifts. Uh, don't push it until you've gotten comfortable with how everything engages and works together. If you gained something out of this video and you want to see more, definitely drop a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell because I'm about to start blasting out tutorials, installs, vlogs, and a whole bunch more for you guys, as well as kind of taking you guys just behind the scenes along, you know, some of the stuff I do in life, and into the formation of a new lifestyle brand from scratch. That's something I'm really excited about. I have finally settled in on the name Onwards, like onwards and upwards. So that's gonna become my new catchphrase. So let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you have any questions, if you have any experience with short shifters. Let me know what you guys wanna see next on the Z and if I were to get another project car. Don't forget to follow me on TikTok and Instagram at Chris Gaines. Uh, where I drop all kinds of behind the scenes content as well as funny, entertaining, and interesting content. And stay tuned for more info on my big giveaway that's coming out. I'm actually tying it in with the lifestyle brand. So it's gonna be really cool, lots of cool stuff that'll be available. Well, thanks for watching and I will catch you guys in the next one. Until then, we're onwards and upwards.